Hello, friends. So, um, I have a deck review to share with you. I guess it's not so much a review as it is a uh, walkthrough, but I am re re review. I guess it's a review. I don't know. Whatever. Um, this is the Silver Acorn Tarot, which I found very randomly um, in a very random way. Whoops. And um, I love it, so I'm going to share it with you. Um, this is the deck um, in the box that has a guidebook in it, and then this bag did not come with it, but it is made by the creator, and I fell in love with it, so I had to order it too, which made the whole thing a little spendy, but, you know, come on. Um, this is about as close as I get to whimsy before I get, like, a, a stomach ache, but I kind of dig it, um, a lot, and, uh, one of the reasons why was this was what I saw. I hadn't really seen the rest of the deck, but I've always loved owls since I was a kid. One of my first jokes when I was a kid was, was an owl joke, one of my first puns, I guess I should say, and, um, been, you know, downhill from there. <laughs> but I, I think it's great and I love the deck so this bag is like a nice velvety quality with like a gold satin inside I haven't actually used it yet it's an interesting shape it's sort of um, a cool shape um, it might actually fit the whole thing inside of it but I don't know um, so this is by is the author yes Stephanie Buscema and it's a 2022 deck the uh, independent deck, it is a limited edition, limited, edit, 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 limited edition of 1,000 copies, and it was printed by Legends Playing Card Company. I think it's very, very cute. Um, and uh, beyond that, I actually really like it, so I think it's very usable, too. But any cuter, and it might just give me a toothache. Um, it has a nice guidebook written by Madame Pemita, who, um, whose channel I really like on YouTube, and whose book... Um, Candle Magic I really like. The only thing I don't like about the guidebook is the size of the font. Like, I don't know who people think is reading font this small. I couldn't read that when I was a child. Um, but we will forgive it, because it seems to be common these days. Um, so this is the back. Let's actually zoom in a bit more. Oh, God, I really need a new setup for this nonsense. All right, love this back. Oops, upside down. Uh, really love it. It's just very, very cool. Um, sun and Moon. Um, they used to say, I, or I, I remember like, oh, this isn't reversible. Like, of course it's reversible. You just know you're going to get a reverse card. Um, so, the Silver Acorn Tarot is a colorful, hand-painted, atmospheric tarot deck created by artist Stephanie Buscema, inspired by the Smith Waite Tarot, the natural excuse me, the natural world and her personal experiences, practices, and intuition. May this deck bring you insight, knowledge, and joy on your tarot journey. Um, there are a lot of cats in the deck, which would normally make me sort of, again, a little, like, weirded out, but I actually love it overall, and so, <laughs> um, I'm not gonna apologize for it. I really like it. Um, so here's the fool. And the thing in the majors in the little guidebook is it actually does point out symbols in the card and, and sort of what they correspond to or what they mean. So I won't get into that, but um, it's got kind of a Halloween autumnal feel um, to it, which again is sort of the reason why I fell for it. Um, here's the magician. Uh, I mean, I just love owls and I love purple. <laughs> so here's the high priestess. The Empress, so there's lots of jack-o'-lanterns and radishes and pumpkins and just, it's very kind of on the edge of Halloween-y without being like a Halloween deck, which I actually really appreciate. Uh, the Emperor, I love him. The Hierophant. The Lovers, so there's Skeletons, I love this Lovers card. You're gonna see, this has one of my favorite death cards I've ever, I've ever come across. Uh, the Chariot, I love his little wreath, his bay laurel wreath, Strength. This is a really unusual Strength card, which I actually really like, because it's not the sort of usual image. Um, so I find that really fun. The Hermit, I love the Hermit. Mm. And this is a really beautiful Wheel of Fortune, too, I think. Justice. The Hanged Man. 
Look at that. I love him. Look how cool he is. He's kind of giving Legba vibes um, with the hat and um, I don't know. I just think he's dope. I love the red poppies. Temperance. The devil. The tower. Little pumpkin-headed people. The star. I love that star. The big bat. The lilies. This is a very cool moon card with the owl and the rabbit. Sort of having a masquerade and the little turtle. This, I really like this sun card a lot. Uh, it's delightful. This is a delightful deck, but I don't think it's not serious. This judgment's beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, I definitely think this is a readable deck. It does, like, this is a little cute, right? But, like, ah, whatever. Um, so now we get into the suits. Here's the uh, suit of swords. This is the order that they came in. I haven't shuffled this yet. It is linen. You know how I feel about linen. If you're with me a lot, it's just, it. I'm a messy aggressive shuffler linen does not always complement that well but um it's very popular and it's easy to shuffle for most folks so in that regard i say bravo um i just, uh, i really like it a lot now there's a lot of animals um obviously but then these skeleton figures i just think it's i just i you know i just like it and that's all there is to it i love this sort of peacock in the seven of swords um and this rooster uh I don't know, it just, it gives me kind of a folk magic-y quality to it. That's really lovely, too. Um, so then we get to the courts, the Page of Swords. The Knight of Swords. The Queen of Swords. King. There goes my heaven. And now we're in the Suit of Wands. There's a lot of cats in the suit of wands for some reason. I don't know if that's significant in some way, but um, I took it. I just love this sort of harvesty color scheme for the suit of uh, uh, wands too. And this made me go, oh, these like butterflies fighting with sticks, like unexpected, but I dig. Uh, six. Love him. Sort of like cranky pumpkin fighting off the, I don't know, pumpkin goers, pumpkin hunters. Like, as far as Wade Smith decks goes, this is one of the, like, coolest, maybe that's not the word that you'd use, but it's one of the coolest I've seen. <laughs> um, so, sometimes things just tickle me. And this is a, this is one that has tickled me. Here now we are cups. Dig these kind of like you can sense that these are like older skulls, older skeletons for some reason. But there they are, um, and I love this. I mean, this is just right out of kind of my childhood, um, you know, Halloween fantasy situation. Um, so I love this. I love this. You know, I just really dig this deck. Um, you know, like, it's, I don't know. I think it's awesome. I love her, like, I love her little kind of psychic tea cup parlor. Uh, and I love this. This sort of, like, ancestor. Like, I just, I don't know. I'm just charmed by it. So here we are in the Page of Cups. The Knight of Cups. The Queen of Cups. And the King of Cups. And then here we are in the Suit of Pentacles. Really beautiful color scheme here, too. I mean, the color scheme throughout the deck is great. I just love the pumpkin heads. And now we have like a little radish with some bunnies. And a carrot. I really like the Suit of Pentacles and its very earthy diversity of, of root vegetables. So here's like another turnip. Is that a turnip or a radish? I think that's a radish and a carrot. Or a sweet potato. It's corn! And some more radishes. And this onion harvesting some pentacles. Um, and this sweet pumpkin just working away on his pentacles. And this, like, strawberry lady. I love her. 
And I love this. I love this deck. I love this purple radish or turnip. <laughs> I never, what's the, I mean, I know like in the grocery store, like a radish is like a little red thing and a turnip's like a larger, but like I never, you know, like, I don't know. I know they're not the same thing, but it's just kind of interesting. This pear head and then the king of pentacles. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to shuffle it for you. I'm going to lay some cards out. Noink. Um, so, I mean, I just really dig it. It's, it's a long deck, I will say that. So for me, it's a little tough to get my, my tiny little hands around. Um, it's not impossible, like, if I bend the deck, I can do it, but it's not, you know, it's just a little long, lengthy for me. And that's just a thing for me with linen cardstock. Like, it's not easy for me to shuffle because it's slippy. Um, you know, and actually when I lay the cards down on the table, I know they're going to be slippy too. And that's going to, you know, just to get like a clean box of nine for me. I guess I could try corner shuffling, although that's not my favorite way to do anything. Um, it does work. I have some decks that I have to, like the Japarids that I have to corner shuffle. Um, and I don't mind that, but that's also not linen. No, that works pretty well. That's better than the, uh... Although that does tend to put a bigger crease in the deck. But whatevs. These are the things I think about. I really like this a lot. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's not cheap. Um, I think the deck itself was about 80 bucks. Um, and the bag was like another 20 And then with shipping, it cost me like, you know, it cost me money. Um, but... It's, it's rare that, like, I get a deck where I'm, like, really, in, you know, excited immediately about it. And this one I was like, I dig this deeply. <clears throat> now, the fact that this is listed as a first edition makes me think that there probably will be additional editions. I actually could see this getting picked up. Um, this has mass market appeal, I would say. I could see this on the shelf of a bookstore for sure. But, um... Let's lay some out. So here we go. There are times where I really just want to like reach for the kind of deck that I learned on, which was Wade Smith. Uh, and then there are times where I just want to look at pip cards. So, you know, we just go with what strikes us, I guess. Um, this has kind of a mournful quality to it, this this reading. Um, but again, it looks great, doesn't it? Like, let me just scooch there. Um, I, I think it looks awesome. Let's lay out another layer on top. Um, so I clearly did not shuffle it well enough, but you get the point. Um, you know, because it's Wade Smith, I know what I'm looking at immediately. It is a little cute. Um, so, you know, if I were doing, like, working with a serious situation or whatever, maybe this isn't the one I would reach for, but, um, you know, I just dig it. You know, as, as, as far as cute goes, I dig this. It's any cuter, and again, I might be turned off, but it's fine. It's good. I like it. I'm not gonna, you know, deny myself the occasional whimsical moment just because I'm a snob. <laughs> which I am. So anyway, I think this is just delightful. I love its sort of October-y, Halloween-y moment. I love the backs. I love its kind of folk arty uh, quality. I love that it's hand-painted. Um, I did, you know, I read a little bit of the guidebook. Actually, the guidebook has, you know, so it's Judica Illis wrote the, um, the foreword. So, you know, there's some, there's, there's definitely some, like, magic cred in the, uh, in the, in the guidebook between the author and the forward. Uh, and just the art's really nice. So I, I like it. I think it's, again, it's, it's definitely one that I will use, um, you know, and, and find joy in. And so bravo to this cute deck and this bag, which I love. So, uh, thanks for joining me on this little review walkthrough situation of the Silver Acorn Tarot by Stephanie Buscema with the guidebook by Madame Pamita. Um, hope to talk to you soon. Stay well, be good, and we'll talk soon.